several hundred million kilometers from Earth on the outskirts of our solar system, mysterious celestial bodies could harbor the first seeds of life. These comets, which orbit in cold regions of space, are more than 4.6 billion years old. They are the memory of our current solar system. However, it was not until 2014 that scientists could get an accurate picture of these distant objects. To reach them and thus go back to the first ages of the appearance of life, the European Space Agency launched the Rosetta mission in 2004. Ten years later, the Philae probe lands on Comet Chori and sends back images. On the surface of the comet, neither water nor ice, but organic matter. These primary carbon-based molecules are thought to be identical to those that would have seeded the Earth four billion years ago. But what exactly are they made of? In an attempt to discover these essential ingredients for life and the conditions of their arrival on Earth, Louis Dendecor and Grégoire Danger set out on an in vitro journey. Rather than traveling millions of kilometers in search of samples of organic matter on the surface of comets, the two scientists set up a laboratory experiment to recreate a comet's journey through the solar system. Basically, we know that a week in the lab will be equivalent to one million years. What is interesting about the experimental approach is that we can change the environmental conditions, for example, the temperature of the water or the wavelength of the imaginary sun that we use. And then there's the idea of a journey, which adds a poetic element, but which is nonetheless closely monitored on a scientific level. This time machine will send an artificial comet on a journey. The laboratory comet is actually ice, similar to that present in the heart of comets when they form. A mixture of water, methanol, and ammonia. It will circulate within a chemical reactor, which simulates the vacuum of space and its temperature, negative 200 degrees Celsius. Inside, the ice is exposed to the ultraviolet rays of an artificial sun formed by a hydrogen plasma which will convert the initial molecules into simple molecules so that they can then produce new combinations. To simulate the comet drawing closer to the sun, the temperature inside the reactor increases. It will soon approach the temperatures surrounding the Earth. Bubbles appear in the reactor. Water separates from the ice. Soon there are only fine droplets left in the reactor. They contain the new molecules formed. In the end, we get thousands of different molecules. It's extremely interesting. In other words, we start with just three small basic molecules, water, methanol, and ammonia. We energize them and we form thousands of different molecules. And these molecules end up on Earth since what we call meteorites are in fact the offspring of comets and asteroids which have passed through the atmosphere and which deposited extraterrestrial organic matter on the surface of the early Earth. The molecules produced by the laboratory comet contain the first building blocks of life, amino acids and sugars, which are essential for the formation of proteins and DNA in every living thing. But is the simple contact between these molecules from comets and the oceans that covered the Earth more than four billion years ago enough to explain the appearance of life on its own? What was the influence of the environment on the emergence of living things? Many scientists assume that if you have water, organic matter, and a little energy, then the right conditions are met for life to emerge or be sustained. I think that's wrong. I mean, organic matter is necessary, but not sufficient in itself to give rise to living things. This takes a very specific environment. It's this environment that will determine the capacity of matter to organize itself in order to move towards life. The researcher's laboratory experiment will have to be prolonged in order to determine the environmental parameters that allowed the emergence of life, an investigation that is also being carried out in space. On December 5th, 2020, for the first time, the Japanese probe Hayabusa 2 brought back to Earth samples from the surface and subsoil of a comet located over 340 million kilometers away. A tenth of a gram of this original organic matter that will allow science to delve into the archives of our solar system. 
and perhaps to discover the key to the origins of life on Earth.